Hello, I'm Dennis Dunphy. And I'm Neil Valera. We are the co-founders of Stick Mobility. We'd like to go over the bow and arrow techniques of the Stick Mobility system. What we're going to do here is address the lateral lines first. And a lot of the, we're going to go over a lot of the subtleties and changes and differences that may be overlooked when you're seeing some of these videos on our social media or through some other instructors. So Neil's going to set his feet about shoulder width apart. And what we're going to do here is he's going to set the stick at 9 o'clock position. Remember that when we're going through these movements that require bowing of the stick, it is only there to add energy to the kinetic chain. It is never the intent to see how far we can flex the stick. If that is the intention of your drill, then you need to revisit and think about why you're doing the drill that you're doing. When Neil sets up, what we're going to go after here is the right lateral tissue line. We need to make sure that his hips are square, first of all. So using the clock system, Neil, this is his 12 o'clock position. Directly behind him is 6. Here's 3 o'clock, and there's 9 o'clock over there. So Neil's going to make sure both hip joints are facing 12 o'clock. He's going to reach over the top with his right hand, palm facing forward, and he's going to grab the stick. As you can see with his left elbow, it's about 90 degrees, and he's grabbing the stick right about where the middle midpoint is or where the sticker is. The very first thing he's going to do here is he's going to push the hips out to 3 o'clock. As he pushes the hips out to 3 o'clock, he gets this nice passive stretch through this right lateral tissue line. He is then going to add activation by simply pushing the stick away from him to the 9 o'clock position. Making sure that he's breathing and also making sure that he's not rotating the hips for the time being. Now he's getting this nice, full, active stretch from the lower extremities of the legs up through his midsection and into his upper lateral tissue line through the rib cage and the shoulders and the arm line. The bottom arm, or his left arm here, is actually the active driver. He is actively pushing away from his body with the stick. The top arm is reflexively pulling, not actively pulling. So remember, bottom arm activation, actively pushing, top arm reflexively pulling. He then eases out of it. From here, it is best, and we suggest that you rotate the stick slightly. You're going to habitually grab the stick, typically in the same hand position, and you'll, instead of flexing the stick in the same direction all the time, we want to change it up so that way it prolongs the life of the stick. And now Neil's going to repeat that same process. He's going to push the hip out first, keeping both legs straight, and then he's going to drive the stick away from him, making sure that he can breathe. Keeping the ribs to the hips. Sometimes people like to flare the ribs and get into the lumbar spine. We want to make sure that the core tissues are doing their job, and that's making sure that they connect the upper and lower extremities together and can, can maintain that nice rib placement. From here, now he's in this position, now we can add some rotation or some flossing. So not moving the stick, we're going to floss the hips a little bit. So Neil can turn the hips towards me to the right and then turn the hips in towards the stick nice and slowly. And as he does that, and as you do that at home, what you're going to feel is those oblique slings start to expand and contract based off the movement of the hips. You're also going to feel some torque at the feet. So the feet are going to drive into the ground, and as you're turning the hips, you're going to feel that sensation on the bottom of the feet also. He can do that a few times, and then he can ease off. Another thing that we want to think about, too, is when you're at end range in the bow and arrow position, if the stick were to suddenly disappear, you should not fall over. If you were to fall over, that means you're leaning on the stick as opposed to actively using it in the way we'd like you to. 
Now we're going to floss the shoulders this time. So Neil's already in his position. He's driven the hips out. He's pushed the stick away from him. Now he's going to squeeze the abs, squeeze the glutes, and he's going to lock the hips into place. And he's going to move only the stick. So he's going to push the stick forward. And then he's going to drive the stick behind him. Once again, making sure that he keeps the rib cage set. So as he goes behind him, he doesn't want to open up the ribs. He wants to, so this is an example of what we're talking about. He wants to keep everything nice and still. And then as you'll see, when he brings the stick behind him, look at the fabric of the shirt. You can see how it extends and opens up. So that's the process of flossing the shoulders. And for a lot of people, the lateral line tissue, they don't really think about how it runs into the shoulder region. It doesn't just mean right in this hip area. The other subtle thing that you want to do is make sure that you're tilting the head. The lateral tissue runs up into the side of the neck. So we want to make sure that we get that uh, subtle importance into that movement. If you, can, if you want, what you can do is actually tilt the head and then bring the head back up. And you're going to feel that when he tilts the head, he's going to actually feel that in the right shoulder as he tilts the head down. As he brings the head back up, he's going to feel that subtle change in that right shoulder capsule. So that is the basic lateral bow and arrow to address the lateral tissue line. Once that's done, then go ahead and complete that to the other side because you have two lateral tissue lines, so you don't want to be lopsided. Now, we're going to move on to the sagittal bow and arrow or forward movement. So Neil's going to set up in a split stance position. So his feet are relatively close, close together. He has his right foot, uh, he's going to put his left foot forward, right foot back. And don't be afraid to get a nice big stance in this position. Don't be dainty with the stride. What is the intention of the sagittal bow and arrow? The intention is to be able to split the hips. So one hip is going to drive forward while the other hip drives back. The intention also is to get some thoracic rotation to activate those oblique slings because if you really think about it, this is just an exaggerated walking or running position. So we want to get those oblique slings or performance lines or spiral lines locked in to get the upper and lower extremities tied together. The stick is at 12 o'clock position in his right hand. You can see how far away the bottom of the stick is from his toes. It is not in super close. Remember, if you place the stick in too close, you're going to add way too much stress into the stick and too much flex, which when the stick is new is going to be fine, but as it ages, it's going to start, like anything else, to lose its integrity a little bit. So you want to make sure that it's important for safety reasons to make sure you do this properly. So he has the stick a good 8 to 10 inches in front of his toe line. Now, he's going to bring his left hand up top. As you can see, both palms are facing you in the camera right now. And now what Neil's going to do is with his top hand, he's going to push the stick down into the floor at about 30-40% tension. And now he's going to actively, with the bottom hand, push forward a little bit and reflexively, he's going to be pulling back with his top hand. He's also splitting the hips. He's intending to drive this left hip forward and driving the right heel back to get that nice split in the hips. And you can see he's rotating. You can look at the fabric of the shirt and how that's opening up this oblique sling from the front of his right hip all the way into the left shoulder capsule. He's breathing. You can see there's not that much flex in the stick. You don't need that much. And he's going to ease off after he holds that a little bit. He can rotate the stick slightly, and he can do that again. He's going to push the stick into the floor about 40% tension with the top hand. He's going to actively push this bottom hand away. And as he does that, the contralateral pattern kicks in. So his right hand is pushing forward, and his left knee is driving forward also. And so for people that don't have, that have dorsiflexion issues, this is something that you can really work on getting that 
dorsiflexion capability and bringing that knee over the toes. So if I want to encourage it a little bit more, I can say, hey, Neil, let this knee touch my hand. Boom. You see how that just worked? So I gave him a new task, and now he's really working on loading that dorsiflexion position. And so once again, he's still not overstressing the stick. He can keep the same position, but switch hand position. And this, of course, is going to open him up into more of his ipsilateral pattern. So now both palms are facing towards me or to the, his 3 o'clock position. He's with the top hand, he's going to push down into the ground at about 40% tension. And with the left hand, he's going to drive the stick forward. Same thing's happening. As he's pushing forward with the left hand, he's driving this left hip forward, and he's driving the right heel back. He's getting that nice split in the hips. He's feeling this line of tension all the way from the, from the feet to the hands, folks. He can breathe. Make sure you're breathing when you're in your end range as a position. If you can't breathe, that means you don't own that position. So we don't want to spend too much time there. Oxygen is our friend. And he can ease off and he can relax. And this is the sagittal bow and arrow. We want to make sure, now, if you think that the stick is going to slide out from underneath you when you're in this position, you can use the base of a wall. So really quickly, what we show with this ramp is imagine there was a wall here. Neil would anchor this into the base of the wall and do the same thing if he was afraid or unsure that the stick was going to shoot out from underneath him. And so you can see from here, he's got the stick locked into the, into the base of the ramp or your wall at home, and he's going through the same exact movements. So there's your sagittal bow and arrow from a split stance position. Please make sure that the front heel stays flat on the ground. During this movement, during this example, you didn't see Neil's heel, front heel coming off the floor at all because we really can use, we have main focal points that we're targeting, but we also have a lot of other areas that we can indirectly really target at the same time. Now, let's move this down to a half kneeling position. So we have a pad here. So once again, this is only for people that have no issues getting down on the floor with their knees. If you have somebody that has issues, we do have a whole selection, a whole variety of seated positions that we can teach you in uh, the same drills, and those videos are available on YouTube. So Neil is in the half kneeling position with his left knee down and his right leg in front. What we're going to do is once again address that left lateral tissue line in this example. So Neil's going to bring the stick to his right side or his 3 o'clock position. He has the arm extended away from him. The bottom of the stick is slightly angled towards him anyways. He's not grabbing. This is a six-foot stick or a three, little, over, little under three-meter stick. So he's not grabbing up here in the middle of the stick. It's not practical in this half-kneeling position. As you can see, he's grabbing lower. So make sure where your hand placement is, is very crucial to get the desired outcome or optimal outcome that you're looking for. Neil's going to reach over the top with that left hand. You can see already, look at his shirt. You can see what's opening up already and what's lengthening. You can see from the position that this right lateral tissue line is already opening up. With the top hand, with his left hand, he's going to push the stick down into the floor. He can drive his hip towards me a little bit and then he can drive the stick away from him with the bottom hand. Look and see how much this lateral tissue line is opening up right here. He's breathing. He's letting that head tilt. You can floss or articulate the neck in this position or any of the other previous positions that we showed you. He can look up at the ceiling and down at the floor. Remember, the neck is meant to move. It has a lot of joints, so it can articulate. It can look up, down, over, side, side to side. So take this opportunity when you have the shoulders in a nice stable position to really let the neck start to mobilize. 
He can come out of it, rotate the stick slightly so he's not flexing the same direction all the time, and go back to the same exact process. He's going to push the top hand down into the floor. He's going to drive the hips away, and then he's going to drive the stick away from him. Like I said a little bit earlier, if the stick were to magically disappear, he wouldn't fall over. He's got control of this end range position. And this is a half kneeling variation of the bow and arrow. And as you can see in the example, there's not a lot of flex in the stick. We just need that little bit to once again add that energy to the kinetic chain. Now, from this position, we can go into the sagittal bow and arrow. So Neil's going to switch positions so that you get a nice little angle on this. Okay. So same position, so he has the same knee down. He has the left knee down, right leg in front. Okay. So he's going to place the stick arm's length away from him. And once again, you can see where the bottom of the stick is in line with the toes or in front of the toes. It's a good four to six inches in front. He has his left hand on the bottom near the middle of the stick. He's going to bring his right hand over the top. Okay. So both palms are facing me right now. And from here now, look at the difference here. So he's got toe extension on the back foot because we want to drive the big toe into the floor to really get that glute activation through the left glute. From here, Neil's going to take his right hand. He's going to push the stick down into the floor at about 40% tension. He's going to drive that left big toe into the floor, really get engagement access to that left glute to drive that, tuck that pelvis underneath to open up this anterior tissue on that left hip. He's then going to take this left hand and he's going to drive forward. So once again, he's trying to split those hips. And now he's creating all that line of tension from the hips all the way into the arm line. He's getting those oblique slings to open up. He's breathing. You can see from the fabric of his shirt where these lines are running. So always remember, when you're looking at how a client's tissue lines move or, or the anatomy trains move, just simply look at the fabric of the clothing they're wearing, and that's going to tell you what the skin and the tissues are doing also. They're right in line with that. He's going to ease off a little bit. He can change his hand position. So now he can go into more of that ipsilateral pattern. If you saw what he just did last video, last clip, he was turning towards his into his front leg, which is that contralateral pattern. This time he's going to be going away from his lead leg, which is going to be more of that ipsilateral pattern. Same thing, left hand is going to push down into the floor at about 40% tension. He's going to take this right hand, he's going to drive the stick forward. And he's going to split those hips. So that left foot is driving the floor backwards and the right foot is pushing the floor forward and you're really going to build up that tension in the hip tissues. And he's got a nice open stretch through here. One of the things that we don't see a lot of is enough hip activation or tissue activation of the hips. And that's one of the things that we really want to get through to people and get them better at is understanding what these tissues of the hips are capable of doing and what we actually need them to do. A lot of people today, especially since we do a lot more sitting than what our great-grandparents did almost 100 years ago, our great-great-grandparents, where they stood a lot more than we do today, they were a lot more active. Sedentary lifestyle, when you sit on your keister all day long, you get a lot of hip tissues that don't understand or you're not giving them the stimulus that they need to utilize their function. So we always want to stress the importance of activating those hip tissues so that way you get better and stronger through those regions. And this is the sagittal half kneeling bow and arrow. One of the things that we do not want to see happening is go ahead and stand up in the up position is going from the sagittal standing split stance and then dropping down into the half kneeling position. As you can see when that happens, people will add way too much flex in the stick. Stay in one position and then switch to the other. 
Don't do that transition if you want to maintain safety protocols and longevity of the stick. Break those two segments up into individual movements, not one. So Neil's going to demonstrate, once again, the difference between those two. It is, after all, understanding the intention of your movement and the intention of your training. That is what we're after. And this is the half kneeling protocols. Come on up, and then we're going to show you some of the other little subtle things that we can see and we can change. If you have someone that has a really hard time pushing the stick away from them. So let's have Neil set up. He's going to do the, diff the opposite side this time in the first movement, which is our lateral bow and arrow. When he reaches over the top with his left hand and he pushes his, his hips away, some people will not have the strength in the shoulders to actually drive the stick away from them. They're struggling. They're like right here. You can see them shaking. You can see them really struggling. There's way too much stimulus for them to be able to handle that. We want to be able to regress this. And let's show you how a very easy way to do that is. Neil can simply take that right hand and extend it all the way out. And he can move the hand up a little bit higher to about shoulder level. He wants the bottom of the stick slightly angled in towards him because when we tell you to push the stick down towards the floor, your arm line is always going to draw in towards your center or your vertical center or your spine. All right. If the bottom of the stick is placed away from you too much, when you tell somebody to push down on it, they're really more apt to lean on the stick more than they are to actually recruit the tissue fibers that we're actually looking for. So once Neil activates the stick, he pushes the stick into the floor about 30 to 40% tension. He keeps the same thing. He drives his hips out to the nine o'clock position. He's now gonna simply take his left arm and he's gonna reach over the top. He's gonna let his head tilt and he's gonna try to get that left hand to reach out to the end of the stick. Look at how much lateral line tissue activation he's getting without overstraining or overstimulating this right arm. He's going to make sure he can breathe, and then he's going to ease off. So that's one way we can add some regression to this so that it's scalable to anybody or any client that you're working with. Another way you can regress this is, let's say I'm a wall. So I'm going to have Neil, so he's just going to simply place the stick up against the wall. So that my hand is here for that purpose. What Neil's going to do is grab the stick right about where the middle of the sticker is. He's going to bring his left hand up like he's taking an oath. And he's going to simply push the hips out to 9 o'clock. And as he pushes the hips out to 9 o'clock, He's leveraging his torso towards the wall, and look what happened with the stick. It added some flex, and now he's going to once again just simply reach over the top with the left hand, and he's going to try to reach that left hand to hit the stick. He's going to ease off, and he can rotate the stick slightly again, and he can repeat the same exact thing. He can push the hips out to the side. He can leverage his torso towards the wall, which is going to add flex into the stick. And he's going to actively reach over the top. And then he's going to ease off. So we can hold these dynamically. We can actually use this drill before you're going to go into your training. So. If Neil was going to go into his workout, but he wanted to open up these lateral tissues because remember, the lateral tissues are the glue that connects the anterior and posterior chains together. So we want to make sure that we're not ignoring the lateral tissue lines. So if Neil were about to train, I would tell Neil, I'd say, hey man, why don't you give me about five reps 
of the lateral bow and arrow and he'd dynamically just go through the movement. So he would set up, elbow at 90 degrees, he reach over the top with that left hand, and all he's going to do is push the hip out, then push the stick away, and then he's going to bring it back together, and he's going to repeat. And he's going to give me five reps. And we're going to actively, dynamically open up this right lateral tissue line. And that's going to give you some really great prep, either before you hit the field, hit the court, hit the rink, whatever it is, or hit the training floor to really get all this lateral tissue, get that QL to open up a little bit. And then once he's done, he's going to switch to the other side and he's going to repeat five more dynamic movements, increasing gradually the range of motion as he moves in and out of the position. Remember to breathe. And another thing we want to make sure we're doing here too is not pushing the hips back. You may find that some people in, in anterior tilt have a tough time bringing the pelvis underneath them. So you may find that you see some people sticking their butts out and going really into that anterior tilt. Try to avoid that. Squeeze those glutes. Give that posterior pelvic tuck a nice little activation and bring that butt underneath you and bring the hip bones underneath you. So there's a way that we would actually use the lateral bone arrow to help warm up before your training session or before your game. Afterwards, we would then implement it into a recovery strategy. So now if Neil went through the same thing, he just got done playing or he just got done training, and now he wants to down-regulate and really stretch those tissues out. Same exact setup, hip square, Left elbow is at 90 degrees. He's going to reach over the top. This time when he pushes his hips out and he extends the stick away from him, the only difference now is he's going to hold it longer. Simply put, he's going to hold that 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds, whatever he feels is appropriate and really what feels good to him. And as he feels that opening up of the tissue line and it really expanding, then he can ease out of it whenever he feels it's necessary. And that's how we would use that same exact drill for two different purposes or two different goals. As soon as he was done, he would just simply go to the other side. Remember, add articulations in where you need it or where you feel it's necessary. You can add the hip flossing or the shoulder flossing, either once again, before your training session, before your game, or once you're holding your static stretch, once you've held that static stretch for a little bit, you can go through the hip flossing, but then hold the end range of the hip floss statically to open up the oblique slings. Or you can use the shoulder flossing and when he goes behind him, he can hold it a little bit longer to really open up the chest, ribs, and arm line. And relax. Nice. That is an example of how we use the stick to really help us gain access to our lateral tissue lines and, hopefully, and the oblique slings, even on the sagittal plane. I hope we got out of this the intention and understanding what the purpose is of why the stick is there, why it needs to be able to flex, and the energy that it's going to add to help you own your movements.